Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Mr. Puffy uh, left a huge pile of processed rodents there. So, although he's expecting food, I'm going to remove this first because it really stinks. Get any in his water dish, although that'll probably be changed out. We'll get rid of this little bit of urate. And we'll shut the door for now, and I will go get some rodents that's already uh, thawed and ready to go. Puffy is looking like a puff adder should. Keeping a low profile. Sometimes Puffy gets really ticked. I think he's in hunt mode now and not defensive. Yep, that's exactly what it was. You know, when he's got his head cocked down, that's defense mode. When he flattens along the ground, that's hunting mode and such. So uh, I gave him a medium rat and not a small rat because you know he went for quite a while without any food so I'm bulking him back up. I will eventually cut him back because now he looks like a very healthy puff adder again. Mr. Weasel just shed and he didn't eat last week, so he should be rather enthusiastic about eating this week. You never can tell with Mr. Weasel these days. He's an old guy. <laughs> yeah, I would say that that was a bit of an enthusiastic uh, visit. Uh, you know, how quick he came over the top of that log. Uh, snakes never cease to amaze me with their ability to move uh, almost at warp speed, uh, blink of an eye stuff. He didn't savage it this time, so he's got it in the right orientation, so hopefully he'll eat it without much ado, because he's hungry, he's like, I'm hungry, I'm just not messing with this, I'm just gonna eat it. Well, this is the uh, Trimasurus purpula maculatus, no, she's uh, interested in feeding. Hello? No? I doubt she's going to eat if she hasn't taken it. She's one of these things you very rarely see out and about. She eats live food uh, primarily, uh, but I try uh, uh, some non-live food. Oh, I see someone shed. Well, yes, and we're going to try to occupy his mouth so I can get that shed out. <laughs> He's another f guy that likes to hang out on top of the, uh, the heater in the top of the cage. Hey, Tubby, there you go. And don't get all pissy. I had the uh, fun of cleaning his cage and pulling out you know, all, well, I can't get that, that shed out from up there because um, it's stuck under his fat butt. Okay. So he got one to eat yesterday, so we're not going to, uh, uh, to bother trying to get that shed out. However, this ringwater culvert ate, and this, is, this snake is on the uh, list of cages to clean. Come on, over here. Ring water culverts are very shy creatures. Uh, 
uh, except for Thud. You know, he's gregarious, but I've had him for many, many years. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, ringboard culvers are very shy. Um, you know, they as they grow older and get more accustomed to you, they're a lot easier and a lot less shy. I mean, this guy would never come out of his hut to feed, but now, you know, he, when he sees me, he's like, or she, I don't know what its sex is. Uh, I'm hoping that some of these are females, so I can, uh, uh, they're getting a breeding age, so I think in the fall, um, I'm going to introduce Thud to one or two of the females, uh, because I would like to breed water culbras. Uh, uh, it's been one of my bucket list items. Uh, so I've been growing these guys up from babies. Um, the other babies that are in the bins over there that were in cages but wouldn't eat because they became butthurt in their cages. So now they're back in the bin and they're eating fine. But they're too big for the bin so I'm in a real quandary. So we're going to stop filming for a moment here because I've got to get the water dish out of uh, Fatso's uh, cage and get it uh, swapped out. Not so nice of them. All right, here's the 2017 Egyptian saw scales. Would you like something to eat, huh? Yes, no? If you're not interested, that's perfectly okay because you got, you know, really good weight. No, well, not so excited today. All right. I'll offer it to somebody over here with the shedding, and there we go. Yep, these were hatched here in 2017. Sorry. Uh, their parents I had since early 2000s. Uh, uh, I finally was able, well, I got eggs out of her, the female, the mother, a few times. Um, and one time, uh, you know, I figured that the eggs should have hatched and uh, um, I made the mistake of opening one of the eggs and a live baby in there but it just wasn't fully developed and, and perished uh, because I didn't wait long enough. I've learned uh, since then that Echis eggs hatch within 40 to 60 days um, so we leave them alone uh, as long as they, they look viable uh, not moldy and folded all folded up uh, we will uh, let them incubate. Okay, here's another one from the same brood. You like this, huh? Well, okay. Now with saw scales, usually a bite without saw scaling means that they just killed it and they're gonna eat it. So um, these are the the three eggs that hatched from this brood. Uh, you just saw all three animals. Uh, uh, I have two females and a male. Uh, I don't like to inbreed, so I probably will not breed them against one another. You really have to move slow with these guys because it's very easy to uh, make them go spicy even when they're expecting something to eat. that's open. Um, you can hand me the uh, watering can. Hopefully it's got some water in it. Be. You know, it 
could also be in shed and not wanting to be bothered. Sometimes I think, oh, <laughs> sometimes I really am like, uh, there it goes. <laughs> these forceps are way too short for this. Yeah, he or, uh, yeah, that's the other female. She's the one that very easily goes spicy. Yes. You can see how twitchy she is. Hello. There you go. Can I have that back, huh? These, of course, are Russell's Vipers. These are from Pakistan, where they cause uh, the majority of snake bite death. And venom will initially cause your blood to coagulate, and in the process, use up all your clotting factors, and then you'll hemorrhage out of basically all your orifices could possibly and most likely cause of death is shock and uh, breeding into your brain. Their venom is also used in the uh, diagnostic test used for lupus. So their venom is quite valuable uh, to the medical community. Okay, okay, I'm not bothering you. I'm just pouring water in your water dish. She's the one that usually will go spicy if you're if you're not really, really careful. I'll feed the the male who generally is pretty easy going. Of course, Mr. K is always ready to eat. <laughs> He's very amusing. Okay, stand back. Boy, they are pretty snakes. Yeah, and I mean, these are pretty, but I've seen the ones from India, which you can't get a hold of, are, are quite beautiful. A lot more salmon colored than these. I noted my friends at the Kentucky Reptile Zoo, to whom I supplied a whole bunch of these. Um, they had some other animals that were with them for a longer term that just gave birth to some babies. As I said, it's a real money maker for them selling the venom, but uh, God, I, I don't know how Jim does it. Uh, uh, I don't like uh, uh, having to, uh, to work with these outside of their enclosure. They're a real handful. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. If it wasn't for people like Jim, uh, we wouldn't have a supply of venom that we could count on for these medical tests.